blessings was great. And as we can begin to observe, the Lord has started doing great things already. And I know many have joined us virtually. So let's give the Lord another round of applause and welcome those who have joined us virtually. I want to thank God for Daddy Mike and Mommy Gloria Bamiloye. They've been with us this these days. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. And of course, we thank God for Evangelist Damnola McBamloye and Joshua McBamloye. Thank you very much. We celebrate you always. Glory be to God. Uh, Pastor Kola and Pastor Bossa Olushala are still here as well. Now, I, as I prepare for this fire conference, very, very clearly in my spirit, the Lord will want us to minister to a few people once I finish the very quick message this morning. And it will be multiple pastors laying hands on you at the same time. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Because it is not a coincidence that daddy and mommy are here at this time, at this, in this power conference, and then the Olusholas are here as well. Brethren, as a pastor, there are many things that you, you observe, not just in your congregation around the world. I must tell you that people of God are in pains. People of God are incurring losses and so many terrible things happening. And it ought not to be so. But God has given us everything when he died on the cross and he said it is finished. It is just a few things that we miss. And this morning the Lord will bring those things to our attention. And there is nobody here. I don't care what that diagnosis is. You will not die. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I, I'm not going to run through my slides as usual. I will make the points very quickly. Because what God really wants to do. To lead us to pray. And pray for some people that need divine. I mean it has to happen quickly. By next Sunday. The Holy Shalas won't be here. Daddy Mike and Mommy Gloria. And Tabamloy will not be here next Sunday. They will soon be here again. Can I hear Amen. God has brought them together at this time to join faith with us so that every trouble problem, every nagging problem, we find solution this morning in the name of Jesus. So let me go straight away into the message. I thought we were done with no more losses after part two because I concluded. But then as the days ran by, the Lord then mentioned to me that there was a particular thing that had always made the people of God to go in and out of deliverance. They are delivered today, they are bound in bondage tomorrow. They are healed today, sickness is back tomorrow. So you have to share that thing before you can close on no more losses. So that's why I'm going to move very quickly and I will, you know, attempt not to, you know, go through the slides, you know, as it's lined up so I can finish in good time. Genesis 14, 14 to 16. The message is tied to no more loss part three. No more loss part three. Let me look at your neighbor very seriously and say no more loss. Say it three times, say no more loss. Say it one more time, say no more loss. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he had the strange servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan, and he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he, he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. I told us at the beginning of this series, no more loss, that a loss at any time in the life of anyone is a source of pain. And even those who are around them, we finished service last Sunday and I, we had a birthday celebration here and I needed to join one of our pastors in 30th wedding anniversary. Myself and Pastor Ibuna were riding together and my phone rang from one of our brothers who wasn't in church and he said, I said, I thought you travel. He said, yes, I was going to travel. I couldn't travel. I thought your, your wife would travel. He said, we couldn't travel because this morning somebody 
close to them, back home. Somebody just went in there in the name of arm robber, shot husband and wife the same money and killed them. So they had to go and visit with the family closer to these people that died because they were like in-laws. And from that moment, my countenance just dropped. So how can someone slept in the night and then perhaps greeted the children and friends and in the morning wasted? There are different kind of losses going on in our days and time. And pastors in these days and time need the help of God because a good pastor carries the burden of everybody. If somebody calls you with a diagnosis of stage 4 cancer, as a pastor, you trust God, but you also know that God has to come through for this family. And it's as if the devil knowing very well, like scripture says, that his time is short. He's on serious rampage, trying to suffocate life of people. That's why I believe the Lord is bringing this message again and again and again. No more loss. And it does not matter how critical that issue is. This morning, there will be solution in the name of Jesus. Oh, I said there will be solution in the mighty name of Jesus. But God has arranged this meeting to bring victory our ways. You will not miss your own in the name of Jesus. In the first two, you know, uh, parts, in part one and part two, I, I told us a few things must pay attention to so that we can put an end to loss. The first point I gave is that if I've walked away from your covering, then reach out to your covering for the recovering of your riches. And I'm not going to waste too much time on that. But that Sunday, somebody walked to me who was in a very serious situation. And I mean, really, really serious situation. And he said, she said she wept throughout the service because the, 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 the predicament, the problem she found herself in with the husband in a serious attack was because they had walked away from the covering. And I said, God is a merciful God. God is a God of a second chance. I don't know what covering God has given you. Maybe it's a particular church. Maybe it's a particular father in the Lord. Maybe it's somebody got a position for you in destiny. You despise them. They offended you. You are so angry and bitter and you shut them up in the heart and then you walked away from them. I'm believing God of mercy because I pray for the for the woman and I'm trusting God. It's too much a problem for one woman to be going through. But it began at the point of walking away from covering. Then I said point number two that you must discover the root cause so that you can recover. God must open our eyes to what exactly is the problem. When you, he opens our eyes, then we can do the right thing. I must have shared with you a man whose father, some years ago, at least some of you, whose father stole the bicycle of another father. And that man was using the bicycle to walk so he can make money to sponsor his only son to school. And that bicycle was stolen. And the school education of his son ended abruptly. And then the man placed a curse that the children of whoever had stolen my bicycle will not make it in life. And in that family, it doesn't matter whether they graduated or not, they never made it. Until in the place of prayers, the Lord opened the eyes of this man. Go and ask your father. Did he steal anything that belonged to someone anyway? They had to go and restitute. Went to the man. The man very old now. You know, pleaded and, 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 and begged and bought other things for the man. And the man released them. You must discover to recover. Then, we made the third and final point at the time. That we must pursue to possess. Because in the text that we read, we saw there that Abraham pursued 
to recover the brother Lot who could not pursue by himself because he was in bondage and then recover the goods recover everything because Abraham pursued with his servant and I've said Christians should no longer fold our hands power conference continues now till Friday and as we cross to April the church is filled up but you will be surprised that by tomorrow people will still have serious issues and God is dealing with the issue every day and they will just not show up God asked Naaman to dip six times through the mouth of prophet Elisha dip yourself seven times in Jordan if Naaman had dipped one time and said it's enough he would have died a leper but the man continued one two until the seventh time God who calls this power conference six days knows what he's doing anyway we must pursue aggressively that's where we left it and I thought we are done but then God said one more point and I will make that point very quickly because we need to begin to pray soon this point you must write it down you must position yourself to be rescued many are in and out of problems because each time God's power gets them out their wrong disposition dispossesses them of victory have you not wondered how somebody is prayed for and you can see that this fellow is delivered but one week after the fellow is back in stronger bondage Jesus gave us the hint he said you deliver a man the demon is cast out the demon will go round and round and round and round and round if you find nobody else this fellow I left let me go and check what he's doing now now if the fellow is empty not filled with the power of the Holy Ghost ah the man said I knew the demon will say I know I, I now know my mistake let me now go and hire seven more wicked demons so that when we go in this time nobody can chase us out and then the fellow will return so this fellow who was delivered last power conference who had become even more reckless than before is now carrying bigger problem and the fellow said about I was delivered last month yes but where are you located now said position yourself to be rescued L Lot married to a woman we don't know her name the Bible calls her Lot's wife so I, we can say Mrs. Lot had enjoyed deliverance time and time again but when by the intercession of Abraham when God was to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah the angel said we can't destroy this land until you are out Lot your wife and your children they were practically dragged out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But what did we see? Genesis 19, 26. The only instruction to be obeyed says, don't look back, just keep going. Now, Lot knows the kind of wife or knew the kind of wife she was married to. He who shouldn't have left that woman behind. He said, just stay in front of me. As he's turning, I said, keep going. I said, keep going, woman. Keep going, woman. But anyway, the woman knew what she was going to do. She was the only one instruction. And she became a pillar of salt. She could not be rescued. There are people that God will want to rescue. God has done his bit. But they remain defeated. So, when I was in the place of prayers, I needed God to explain this to me in the way that I can come across so you can find yourself here and there. So he gave me some stories and he knows I've, I love painted picture for my understanding. So he gave me a few points. He said, you cannot be victorious by the hand of the Lord hiding in the camp of the enemy. And so there's the story of the woman. The Lord promised her, you are going to have your Samuel this year. It was their 10th, 20th anniversary. And they rejoiced with the husband. And January became February. February became March. March became April. And she did the math. If this year, 
I will have my Samuel. How come is April? Going to me, and I don't have, I'm not pregnant yet. So she called the husband. Because they had informed her that there's a place where they will pray for you in the name of Jesus. Well, you have to drink herb. And you'll be pregnant. So she asked the husband, can a Christian drink herb? The husband said, I don't know where you're headed with this. Depending on what the herb is. I said, okay, that's all right then. When people ask you questions, don't answer in a hurry. You, know, you, you need to know where they are, they are headed with the question. She went to the place. She met other Christians. They introduced themselves, the churches they were worshiping. So ah, I'm in a good place. When it was her turn, they gave her the herb, were poisoned. So she drank it, and the woman said, Don't worry, you are pregnant. She said, Thank you. As she was going home, by the way, she didn't tell the husband. She had a complication. Packed the car, they rushed her to the hospital. It was when they got to the hospital, they discovered she was already three months pregnant. Only she didn't know. So they had to evacuate the baby in the womb. Imagine how devastated a husband like that will be. So you cannot be victorious by the hand of the Lord hiding in the camp of the enemy. And there are people in church, I know it by knowledge, because some have been caught who come to church on Sunday but they patronize psychic afterwards. You cannot be victorious by the hand of the Lord hiding in the camp of the enemy. So when you are delivered today, you must say bye-bye to the devil. Can I hear your amen? amen? Number two, you cannot be victorious by the hand of the Lord when you prefer to remain in the dark. A woman sent me an email some years ago and said, Pastor, that she had been in adultery for 19 months, but that she's dying of guilt, that the husband is not aware. The email is anonymous at yahoo.com. So I said, ah, thank God for letting me know. But <laughs> this is not confession because I don't even know who you are. So I called my wife, we read the thing. I said, this was the problem of Saul. He was just hiding and hiding and hiding. When Saul was confronted, he said, well, it's not as serious as you are saying. She replied me and said, well, I've gone to a Catholic church and I've confessed face to face to a, to a reverend father. Hmm. He said, I understand that too. But you know the father doesn't know you. In any case, will you say you have truly confessed? But if you have confessed, why are you still dying of this guilt? Say, woman, please come, let's pray for you. David sinned, committed adultery, killed the husband of the woman, but she honed up. He said, no, I can't come. So that's why you are dying of the problem. If you know how many people are in the secret, a woman had a baby for another man and for 21 years he kept it away from the husband. The Lord shot her womb. She will get pregnant, something we, we, we suck the thing and then the pregnancy will come down for 21 years and each time the Lord is saying, until you tell this man, you will not know joy too. 21 years. Finally, another word of knowledge came that you have seven days to tell this man or you die was at that time she then came out because she knew God meant business you have been the darkness hiding you can't beat the devil in the dark I must have told you that young girl that broke the plate of the mom and the housemaid saw her and said from today you have no breakfast if you don't let me have your break, breakfast, I will report you to mommy. Say, ah, please don't tell mommy, mommy, don't tell mommy. It's okay. Give me your breakfast. Every morning, the housemaid collected the breakfast of this girl. The girl was dying of hunger. The house girl was getting fatter and fatter by the day. And each time she said, ah, I won't give you my breakfast, then I'm going to tell mommy. So one day, finally, 
went to mommy. Say, mommy, some six months ago, I broke your plate. From that day, I had no breakfast in this house. Mother said, I saw you when you broke the plate. And I could see how the house has been tormenting you. Isn't that what the devil is doing to many of us? You think God didn't see you? When you did what you did? Of course, he saw you. It's not, we don't serve a blind God. And, and he could see you too. How the devil is grinding your nose on the ground. Affliction after affliction. And all he's waiting for is to say, I'm sorry. The mother hugged her. Say, next time you do something wrong, come to me and report yourself. It doesn't matter how many people have found out. You cannot be victorious by the hand of the Lord when you prefer to remain in the dark. Number three, you cannot be bitter seeking to be better. You cannot be bitter seeking to be better. No. A choir leader in a church. The pastor made a change as pastors could do sometimes and made somebody as choir director. She didn't tell the pastor she was angry, but she, she hated the pastor with passion. She has been serving in this church. This lady just came. How can pastor make this change? Very angry, very bitter. The pastor's wife, who wasn't part of the decision, became her enemy as well. So maybe she told the husband to change me. Hated the pastor, hated the pastor's wife. But suddenly a strange sickness hit her. It's not every sickness that's from the devil. And even if it came from the devil, you open the door. So she was dying, and pastor mobilized prayer warriors. We have made God to be like he doesn't answer prayers. They prayed in the morning, they prayed in the night. She was dying. And finally, the doctor said, this fellow, we can't help her anymore. Let her go. At that point, they went more desperate in the place of prayers. And then, the Lord opened the eyes of one of the deacons that she's dying of bitterness. And she was confronted and said, yes, yes, I would rather die of bitterness than forgive pastor. Pastor was hearing for the first time. And pastor knelt down with pastor's wife. Don't die. What did we do? Narrated the story. Said, don't worry, we'll correct everything. In one week, she was healed. You cannot be bitter seeking for the better. How bitter are you? How bitter are you? There are many cases of cancer and terminal diseases. Not all, but many of them. Even science proved it. That has to do with the state of the heart of men. Bitterness can only hand you in bitterness. You cannot be seeking, you cannot be bitter seeking to be better. Number four, you cannot build your joy around another person's sorrow and not be in sorrow. You know you are climbing the ladder by pushing somebody down. You'll be pushed down. And now you have been pushed down. You've broken your arm. You have broken your leg. You are calling God to help. He's not answering. Because when you build your joy around somebody's sorrow, you will end in sorrow. But today is a day of mercy. The Lord will be merciful today in the name of Jesus. Can I hear your amen? Number next, five, I believe. You cannot judge God unfaithful and yet seek for his faithfulness. You cannot judge God unfaithful and seek for his faithfulness. My servant, the King K, I went to a minister somewhere in Puerto Rico, the King K was with me. My, 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 the message was tied to the faithfulness of God. And as soon as I was done, made altar call, and people came out. And this lady requested to see me. So I told the pastor, the pastor said, okay, they made the arrangement. And she said, pastor, I didn't come out because I wasn't saved. I gave my life to Christ at 19. I served the Lord. I was the one in charge of evangelism in my fellowship on campus. I won many souls for the Lord. I married as a virgin. I'm pure. I serve the Lord. But when God will give me a child, look at what he gave me. I look at the girl, very beautiful girl. I couldn't easily notice anything. Say, Pastor, can't you see? I said, no. What a pretty girl. Say, no, Pastor. 
God has been unfaithful. Say, what happened? Say, look at the, the, the leg. One leg is shorter than the other. That's the child that God has given to me. Now, at the time, I think I've, I've been waiting for 12 years. I said, ma'am, my wife and I have been waiting for 12 years. We are serving the Lord. We judge him faithful. I had a DVD with me. It was DVD of Vic, the guy without harm. Without harms, without legs. He said, no harms, no legs, no trouble. I took the king, okay, go to my car, bring the DVD, put it in my computer. The thing started playing. She did like this. I said, ah, this fellow is preaching the gospel. I said, yes, because she judged God faithful. I said, have you been pregnant since you have this child? He said, no. I said, that's why you can't be pregnant, because you are not qualified for another. When you can't thank him for what he has given. Do you know the destiny of this child? A child is not great because his leg is, 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 is of equal height. A child is not great because he's fair and complexion. A child is not great because he's doing well in the school. A child is not great because of who he looks like. He's great because God says he's great. So she started crying. I said, God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. You judge God unfaithful. You are asking for his faithfulness. You are wrongly positioned. You are wrongly positioned. If two more, what are we done? You cannot remain in deceit and ask for victory from the God who is called the truth. You have been in church all this while. You know you are not born again. You're fooling everybody. A brother in one of our parishes joined the church many years ago. But she joined the church because she chased a lady to church. The, church, the lady said, I can't, I can't marry you. We can't even go out. I'm light, you are darkness. I said, okay, what do I need to do? So come to our church, give your life to Jesus. He came to, he came to church that Sunday, asked the neighbor, how do they give their life to Christ? He said, pastor will preach. They make altar call, you come out, then you are born again. So that's simple. The pastor preached before he could finish altar call, the fellow was in the front. And then went to the lady, said, did you see me? Said, yes, I saw you. She said, say one more thing. You must become a worker. Say, ah, what do I need to do? The guy could play keyboard. He will normally play in the nightclub Friday, Saturday. Join the choir. Before long, you are suspecting pastor. Maybe I should say <laughs> on the Sunday pastor. Made him the music director. His profile rising. Ordained Dickens. And whatever the anointing meets on your head multiplies. That's how we have anointed fornicator, anointed smoker. There are people who smoke, but they are still pastors. You are in deceit. They make altar calls. You say, I've been born again. I've been in church. Even, I've been in church all this while. I'm in the choir. Why are you fooling? The God we serve is called the truth, the way, the truth. You cannot live in deceit. I want the blessing, victory from the truth. Finally, you cannot deny others' mercy and expect God's mercy. Where are you located this morning? In a moment, we'll be praying. For such yourself. Let us rise. Jesus is Alpha, is Alpha and Omega. Jesus, Jesus is, is Alpha, Alpha, Alpha and Omega. So I praise Him for His Alpha, His Alpha and Omega. So I praise Him for His Alpha, Alpha. everyone and say father in the name of Jesus say loud and clear have mercy on me 
Let make it very loud. Say, have mercy on me. Let him hear you say, have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. Say, have mercy on me. Say, have mercy on me. Go ahead, ask him for mercy. He's a merciful God. He is a merciful Father. I know him. If he could forgive the thief on the cross, if he forgave David, he will forgive us. He just needs us to hone up. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Bible says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever so ever will confess and forsake his sins shall obtain mercy. I will make multiple calls at the same time for sake of time. You are here, you carrying a critical issue. Diagnosis that you know that God has to come through for you. Maybe a case in court that is dicey. Maybe a spiritual attack that you have carried for years. I mean, critical situation. For the rest of us, we'll have one more prayer point to pray, but, and we'll pray that prayer corporately. I'm not calling for anyone, I'm everyone. I'm calling for those critical issues that require corporate anointing. Our daddies and mommies and pastors are here. It will be multiple people praying for you this morning. If the enemy is struggling with one, the other we hit, no, no, no problem will escape this one. But you also know that you are not born again. You know that you are born again, but you have not shown mercy unto others who you should show mercy to. Then you need to come and confess that sin before the Lord. I don't have, it's already half past me. And we need to close shortly. So I don't have plenty of time. I'm just going to count from one to five. If you're not here, I don't, we don't have time. We're not playing games here. All right, five now. I'm counting down from five to four to one. And, and four. And three. And two. By the time I say one, except you are coming from upstairs, then it will have been too late. Because church is not a place to gamble. It's a place for your, for, for your faith to come alive. The woman said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. You are struggling with pornography, yet you claim that you are born again. Yes, you might have given your life to Christ, but the devil is taking hold of your mind. You need to come out for deliverance. The choir we worship, Daddy Mike, sir, Mommy Gloria, um, Pastor Lushala, Please just let's just go around them and just pray for them, lay hands on, on them. Just pray, just minister to them as you are led, please. Just minister to them please, as you are led. If you create two rows, we need ushers at this time to help us. Don't leave the place yet, but we are going to pray corporately. They will minister to you, but stay there. Let's create high for the ministers to be able to go through. We, we need the ushers or ministers and protocol to help us create the high so that the ministers can go and go around them worship the rest of us begin to pray for yourself too Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Don't be an onlooker. We solve my problem. Jesus, solve my problem. Solve my problem. The Lord is here. Pray for yourself. Don't be an onlooker. Ask God to answer you too. And have mercy on you.
we stand this morning because your power is here and your spirit is here and you are here with all your entourage of angels the power of heaven is in this place the glory of the Lord is in this place therefore Jesus that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow be it the name in heaven or on earth or under the earth, all must submit that Jesus is Lord. Therefore, we stand here this morning, every infirmity, every affliction, in anyone hiding in this place, inside anybody here, we have prayed, we have commanded, and we have and we have decreed and so I therefore stand in the mighty name of Jesus that everything that has been decreed here this morning come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus therefore we speak to all infirmities we speak to all afflictions we speak to all illnesses we speak to all sicknesses wherever you may be every terminal diseases every situations that the doctors don't know what to do about it wherever you are hiding in the bodies of anyone here the bible says our body is the temple of the holy ghost so inside the temple is the power of god inside the temple is the power of glory therefore any tree our father has not planted shall be cut down and cast into the fire all infirmity in the bodies here our father has not planted you we therefore cut you down and we root you out and we cast you into the fire in the mighty name of jesus the axe is laid upon the tree any tree that bears no fruit shall be cut down there is no fruit you are bearing. Every infirmity, every, of every affliction in the body here, you are bearing no fruit. So the axe is laid upon you and we cut you down. And we root you out in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I speak against all infirmity and sickness in the head. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity and affliction in the chest. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every affliction, every infirmity, anything that is contrary to the plan of God in your body, come out in the name of Jesus. I set fire of God upon every affliction, every infirmity, every generational causes. We stop you in the name of Jesus. Every foundational causes. We stop you in the name of Jesus. Every causes, every incantation, wherever it may come from, 
we are from birth or from decree or from marriage or from home we stop you from existing in the mighty name of Jesus right from this morning you are delivered from the powers of darkness and you are transformed into the kingdom of God's dear son in the name of Jesus whatever we decree on earth is established in heaven in the name of Jesus walk in your victory move in your victory you are all covered by the blood of Jesus and we walk in the glory of God and thoughts no more loss here in the name of Jesus we shut out every losses in the name of Jesus there shall be victory alone inside this church victory inside this church life inside this church sand earth inside this church sand mind we rebuke sicknesses we push them out of our families in the name of Jesus walk in the Lord's glory in Jesus name we pray come on give the Lord a big hand of praise celebrate him Get a little bit of a shock at all about.